Hello, and welcome back. Today we're here in Delta Junction, where we're going to be sprucing up the main train station of this very important transfer point in our rail system, here in the Tyler Moore East. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, so much fun spending time with you. I love showing you around and I love building things out and taking some of your feedback and ideas. Uh, so thank you once again for joining me. I very much appreciate it. So Delta Junction built out mostly as a bedroom community for our industrial sectors on the um, east side of the river here. Uh, but the train station being so busy and bustling, it is very, very noisy. And uh, it, the noise levels are way too high for anyone to be living um, any closer to this train station than we already have developed out in Delta Junction across the overpass. So this whole sector over here is going to have to be workplaces and parks um, we have a very noisy bus station here, as well as a bus depot. Um, just a lot of heavy usage in this area. Not suitable for people's homes. Definitely not a great place to take a nap. So we're going to be building out some offices through here, mostly um, as we don't have a great demand for commerce right now. And that's because we need more workers for the industry, which is why Delta Junction was built, uh, which then, you know, the workers for the industry turn out more products, which then can uh, lead to greater commercial demand. But uh, it's a catch-22 when you build a community for more workers. Those workers need a place to go grocery shopping. Oh, tough one. Um, but we find a balance here. We've, we've got some grocery stores and uh, retail on the other side of the overpass. But around the station here, I think we'll keep it mostly, um, probably the offices of so many of these operations, um, the bus maintenance areas and the transit companies, um, and, you know, just a place where hopefully the building inside is quiet enough for you to get your work done. Um, if not, then perhaps we just need to plant a forest around the station, but that's not the case. Uh, we're, we're going to be flushing this out with more, um, more small, uh, human scaled buildings for offices. And that's for two reasons. One, because uh, we don't want big, tall skyscrapers out in the countryside. We already have quite a few tall apartment and condo buildings in Delta Junction. Uh, we don't want to create a skyline in the middle of the peaceful, quiet rural areas. Um, second reason is that um, we don't want a whole lot of workers through here because that, again, will take away from the workers that should be going off to the industrial areas. Um, I don't want to plant, uh, plant, to put too much concrete around here. Um, it's getting a little bit uh, parking lot looking, so I think it's time that we involve some greenery. So uh, seeing as how the snow has melted right now, but it is not yet spring and the grass is pretty dead, things are not blooming. Um, so I'm gonna plant some juniper trees here because they're hardy enough to make it through the winter. Um, some lovely evergreens and then some scrub brush uh, to protect their roots and keep them warmish from the cold and the snow. Uh, keeps most of the ice and winter damage away from the more vulnerable part of the juniper bushes. Um, and we will be adding a little bit of color in here too because I just can't resist it. It's January right now. I need something cheerful and happy. So we'll say some uh, bit of a microclimate in the front doors of the station here thanks to the uh, heat of all the trains and the people milling about has uh, allowed for the first daffodils of this season to start sprouting their heads up. Um, so just uh, that way we can have a little bit of a hope uh, for the coming spring planting season. I fully intend to go wild on my plantings this spring and you will see 
how the Tyler Moore comes to colorful fruition when everything begins to bloom. But that's for another day. For now, we'll just do uh, the hardiest winter decor that we can. Um, now, I'm going to have to fix the circle so that there's more crossing opportunity as well. Um, so we'll be getting into working on the road. Um, but before I turn everything into more pavement, I'm going to try to protect these little green spaces. Uh, planting some trees around here so I don't forget that this is not going to become a newspaper stand um, but should really be uh, a quiet green space because we don't have enough of that down here right now. Okay, um, I say it's time to tackle that oval. The, I, I say let's call it a circus maybe, um, which really doesn't have a name yet. By the way, um, it's named Tennyson Square just by default from the game, which, I mean, I, I love Tennyson. It's a wonderful Irish author, um, but I don't really know what significance he holds in this community. So um, leave a comment below about uh, if you think um, Tennyson Square or Tennyson Circus should still be named after Tennyson. Uh, if anybody enjoys Tennyson, maybe you list your favorite poem by him. Um, but uh, otherwise, throw out some suggestions about who this or what, maybe, maybe not even a person, maybe a tree or a place this circus should be named after. Um, whatever its name, it is going to help us keep time for our train schedule. It will supply us with a non-gendered, very safe, designed for everybody washroom facility, the PTT toilet, um, and the lovely florist stand there. So you can pick up a bouquet on your way home from work um, if you feel like you need to pick up some bright daffodils to um, brighten your cold, dark winter day. Uh, when you've come home from working in the lumber industry or out at the mines, or out on Smelt Island on the oil rigs. Either way, when you come back to your home at Delta Junction, you're going to be happy to see that florist stand right outside the station. Um, granted, it, people with hay fever might not agree with that. Um, fair enough. But as you can see, the crowds are now starting to come back. Uh, it's still a busy area, even while it's under construction. Um, it's, it's often way more busy than this, and that is what prompted the decor, um, because I realized there's such a heavy transfer of people between lines here, and the area was still just really barren. But now it's coming to life, and this is just during the cold, dark, barren winter days. Um, at the peak of summer, festival season, when everything is in bloom, and we've got, you know, pizza stands and uh, beer and wine gardens all around and stuff. Uh, it will be quite a, a lovely space when the weather allows for it. Um, here in uh, the Tyler Moore, um, the weather is a lot like uh, the southern Great Lakes in that uh, the snow comes and goes throughout the winter. We, we never really have full snow coverage all winter long anymore. Um, it's maybe 40 to 50, 60 percent of the winter time that we have snow, and usually it's just a light dusting to turn everything white. Um, but our heated sidewalks here, um, we, we don't have to worry about our crosswalks that we just added um, being covered with that snow when it does snow. Um, because the snow melts as soon as it hits the pavement here. Um, I'll let you in on a little secret. That's just because I didn't turn the map to winter mode. I just used um, a different setting uh, on the mod that allows you to change the um, all of the different textures and uh, settings for the ground. Um, that way I, I just changed it to a, a winter theme and I don't have snow on rooftops. I don't need snow plows. Um, and to me, it looks a bit more realistic 
because that snow on the rooftops never lasts more than a day or two before it melts off. Um, here in the Tyler Moore, we have lots of periods of brown, dry, green, dead looking vegetation and everything else being pavement gray. And that's kind of what a lot of the winter is uh, for the Tyler Moore. Um, the snow will return at some point for sure. Uh, it's, it's never gone for the whole winter at this point in the year. Um, we're just going to see if we can get more crossing spaces in here for pedestrians because we have so much pedestrian activity. Um, but I'm having quite a bit of difficulty with it. I don't want to bore you with the uh, commentary on it though, because it keeps going on. But the winter time here, um, is, is pretty mild at times, and this is just one of those mild spells. And that is why the work crews are getting on this project while they can, because uh, it is warm enough to be uh, working outside without uh, freezing your extremities. No frostbite for the work crews in the Tyler Moore. Uh, big crowds of people heading off to work right there. Must be a morning rush. Time for that first shift of the day. Um, but I just can't seem to get things to work with this, uh, trying to get an extra note in here. Um, I'm going to have to try a few different things as I uh, fiddle around with a rigmarole. And how many other different words can I use to describe this? Finagle, I guess, would be a good one. Uh, do you have a word to describe how how I obsess over this? Drop it in the comments below. Um, but for now, I think we're going to take a break and hear a word from the Faruqi department store. While you're enjoying our vast array of merchandise on all seven floors of shopping, don't forget to refuel at the Faruqi Cafeteria on our second floor. With a different $10 special every day, you're sure to find something delicious and nutritious for all tastes. Monday's special is our famous meatless meatloaf, served with green beans and mashed potatoes with gravy. On Tuesdays, we have a sweet and spicy Thai curry with garden vegetables, pineapple, and red chili in a coconut-based sauce. Wednesdays, we have the Faruqi family's own secret recipe, Portobello Burgo with za'atar, cashew, and yogurt. Thursdays, it's breakfast for dinner with our all-day breakfast plate. Two eggs any style, sausage, ham, or bacon, hash browns, and your choice of avocado or grilled tomato. Fridays are Frank's fish sticks served with our famous thick-cut fries. And all weekend long, we have our popular Faruqi Club sandwich. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, mayo, honey mustard, and a slice of breaded fried zucchini on egg-dipped grilled bread served with a pickle on the side. So come on down to the Faruqi Cafeteria and enjoy a mug of our fair trade coffee, always just $1.50. Rookie. Ah, mm, there we go. That was a delicious club sandwich. Oh, that fried zucchini just puts me over the moon every time. Um, so I'm going to come back to this with fresh eyes now after a little break and uh, figure out I'm just going to have to make a wonky road out into the middle of nonsense land and use move it a wonderful wonderful mod that helps me make everything look pretty around here um so i'll stretch this down here and then i'm gonna just eyeball it because i don't want to mess around with any more node controllers or any of those little uh tools I'm just going to eyeball it because I this is a moment where after the frustration of not being able to add a simple note easily, I just need to do it with my own eyes and fingers. Um, I'm a very tactile person. I'm an artist, an illustrator in the real world, um, so I like to work with my hands. Um, I do a lot of chalk pastel drawing where I mostly 
blend with my fingertips it's my main tool i don't use a blending stump or anything like that um so it's it's really uh, uh much more satisfying to me to be able to use move it and be a little more obsessive about how it's going to look just so um we'll try to get this matched up um i will add a uh, crossing in the nodes another day because i just don't want to go back into <laughs> the node editor right now i'm gonna go back into nonsense land again to make this one work basically do the same thing on this side uh, the things you do for love of your sims right you just want them to have a nice looking plaza outside of their big busy train station so that when they're coming to and fro around uh, from work and from home they have something nice, a nice environment to come home to at least. So it feels like it's worth the hard work in the day because at least they're surrounded by a place where clearly people care about it. And that's very important. So, um, you know, trying to make it look like this, the workers bedroom community is a place that matters where, you know, we do still think about it, um, having a few perks. Um, so, you know, if those perks are as simple as a, a clock and a washroom and some landscaping, I, I think our sims are worth it, that's for sure. Um, we're going to be getting more into landscape details in the coming episode, which is going to be a crossover between the Moor and the Moor East. Uh, the Parks and Rec Department is coming up, so be sure to join me for that. Um, but for now, I'm going to finish this off and call it a day. And we'll be taking a look around at the area shortly. Um, looking at uh, just how how worth it was to fiddle around so much with this. Um, this headache had to be worth it. Um, but we'll see that shortly. Um, for today, though, I think we're going to wrap it up. And uh, I'll see you back here in no time at all. I uh, really appreciate you joining me. And I really appreciate your company um, and your interest and your time. So thank you so much. Um, I really, really enjoyed making this for you. Uh, and I hope to see you again soon here in the merry Tyler Moore East. Bye-bye.